Welcome to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. Uh, gosh, I, you know, I want to dive right in because in the past I do a whole intro and I feel like that's not really necessary. Um, we're really here to help amplify, ignite your connection to your own true nature. And the path that you go about doing that is so unique to you. And my goal is to just offer experiences, stories, uh, philosophies, science, uh, inspiration, joy, whatever we can to help ignite that in you. Uh, Part of that process is very much getting clear on what works and what doesn't work and knowing that that's constantly changing. And I'm so thrilled to uh, welcome our guest today, me, myself and I, and everyone on Transformation Talk Radio. Her name is Kristen Pierce, and she is an author of absolutely gorgeous children's books. Um, I met her because we are both uh, in the body talk system. She is actually an instructor of a profound system called Mindscape that is about teaching people how to access and utilize the skill of intuition as a path in their life. And through that experience and so many others that could take a, you know, days to go into because she's just got so much in that operating system of hers. She wrote five books so far for children and they're so very inspiring that uh, we're here to look at it, right? This idea that our compass comes from within, right? We're, we're in this intellectual information age where we have access to so much, are we offering our children the opportunity to go inside as a rudder in their life? And uh, Kristen's work speaks to me so deeply. So thank you so much for joining me today, Kristen. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. I I just said to you before we came on, I I believe the inauguration of the next president might be happening at this exact moment here in the United States. May or may not mean anything to you as a Canadian, but I kind of didn't put that all together because our schedule is quite set. But uh, yeah, here we are. We're competing with the president of the United States. (laughs) No big deal. We got it. For airtime. Yeah, no (laughs) kidding. (laughs) That leads me, there is a podcast of this and and many of you might be listening to that uh, after the fact. But so Kristen, you know, there's so many questions that one could ask, but I think the one, yeah, inner compass, you know, what is it? Well, it is kind of the basis of everything that I am doing, but our inner compass is, we, you know, we all have this inner guidance within us that we can access at any time. And yeah, it's, it's like across the board, we all have this inside ourselves. And when, you know, there's different ways that we can access it, but it can serve as just as guideposts as yeah, like you mentioned as a rudder um, to help us find our true path and to help keep us in alignment with ourselves and our truth, right? Because everyone's path is going to be different and everyone's compass is going to, you know, lead them a different way. But that's why it's important for us to go internally um, to, and to stay aligned in that way with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the, <laughs> it's such, such a profound idea as far as, you know, we inundate, right? Our kids have social studies, they have math, they have English, they have science that, you know, like all of these subjects that they need yeah. to master. And even um, in my opinion, like my kids' health class is again, external ideas of what health is as opposed to this potential of it emanating from a sense or a feel inside right. themselves. Would you, would you, how would you sort of measure that idea that your inner compass is a sense and a feel versus an idea? Yeah, well, that's how we connect with it is through our felt senses, right? Um, 
and some like it, our five senses that we learn about, we can get information that way, but also our more subtle senses, which is not often not what we're taught about in school, but kids are so connected to those senses. Like it's incredible. Right. Um, yeah. and so even just giving them, like you just give them a little bit of information, like even just my first book, your inner compass that could, it just helps to teach them that, you know, you need to get, you know, slow down, maybe get quiet with yourself and you'll be able to start to hear some of these messages. So yeah, when we have information overload happening all the time, or even like screens or, you know, all these things coming at them, it can be overwhelming and it can also, yeah, take us away from knowing or being able to hear those messages from our body. Or even understanding that there is value in that, right? Like, I mean, there's a element of being bombarded with you know, it's like what we had, well, not that I'm at all the same generation as you, but this idea that um, what's the cool thing, right? Like, it's so funny to watch 80s movies now, which was, you know, so prominent when I was in high school, but it's like this, you you look at uh, the the, the archetypes or the energies that were presented, Mm -hmm. right? A girl is is wanting to uh, show and experience her intelligence right? And she doesn't want to be viewed for just a body and a boy. They're all about sex. I mean, we've watched a couple of these 80s movies and that doesn't exist really in the, in the modern day movies that, you know, these roles that were literally, we were bombarded with, at least right. when I was a kid, you know, thinking yeah. that these were the only two things that as a woman, in order to be safe, you need to use your intelligence. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as a, as a man, you should also, or a boy, you should also be interested in getting with a girl, you know, or, you know, and these sort of very simplistic ideas of the true dynamic nature of us. And so how would you say, or how would you describe the difference between intuition or, or uh, intelligence and intuition, right? Or, you know, this idea yeah. that you're, you're an intelligent being and that is demonstrated by you doing well on a test. And then this, this other aspect of you that, you know, doesn't really have one word, does it? Or what word would you use for it? Yeah. Yes. Well, knowing maybe more like that, you know, yeah. that, that knowing, like we don't have to think our intuition. It just, it comes to us. We just have that accessible to us at all times where yeah intelligence would be more the the thought processes although you could also say intuition is like an inner intelligence right that inner knowing but yeah i see what you're saying like left brain thinking versus more right brain feeling sensing intuiting i hadn't even put those the left and right brain piece together in that Mm. moment it's just you know this i've got three teenagers well one actually that's not true one's 20 now so you know the, the focus is is so much on regurgitation of right. other people's ideas. You yeah. know, even when you write a paper, it's about, you know, what does that professor think about it? Mm-hmm. You know? and, and how it, how good can you articulate those things in an organized left-brained yeah. way? Because that's what you get marked upon, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, school is very much built upon those left-brain knowledge structures. And it's um, like, yeah, it serves us in some way, but we also need to have that other component as well, right? That- right, because there's a there's a intuitive piece of being able to write what will please your professor, <laughs> you know, on some level, if you're completely disconnected from, you know, what your professor is looking for that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there you go. There's the right yeah. and left brain. And maybe you could go into that a little bit for us, like, what, what you know, what's the value of using both of those aspects well yeah the value of using both so I when I was younger I was always very much left brain I was really good at the maths and the sciences and all of those things um and I valued those because I think I had to like I was taught that those were the things that were important by my parents and also by school and all of those things so it was really actually hard for me to open up my creativity um I just didn't see a lot of importance there it's like what what's the point of this but as as I've gotten into body talk and gotten into mindscape and then started teaching it it's been really amazing just to see how important both sides are 
you know, um, where the creative aspect, it's not just to create things, it's to help you think outside the box, it's to help you problem solve, come up with solutions, imagine a different situation or even a different future for yourself which what's the, you know what's the benefit of that what's the benefit of imagining you <laughs> well know, how right? do you create change if you can't imagine something different right so like none of these like none of my children's books would exist if i hadn't started to even just open up some of my limiting beliefs about what creativity is and so then it's kind of cool because then I was allowed, um, well, I was able to take the left brain knowledge structures that I know and have learned and get creative with that information to make it accessible to kids in a way that's fun and also helps them learn about something that I feel is important or that, that I wish I would have known as a child, right? Like just to know that your mind is this powerful and you yeah. can access and you can create things and build them in your mind and test them. Yeah. Like that's what Tesla did and yeah. do so with such precision or like create your ideas in there and test things and then make it real, yeah. you know? And it's just incredible to think that you can change not only your own world, but like have an impact on the world based on how you can use yeah. your mind in that way. Yeah. I really, mm -hmm. you know, I think that was the whole movie part so much with this idea that it's not valuable and um, to explore the creative mind. And, you know, I've even, I, I love that it's getting more attention more and more in, in right. the world. Uh, yet at the same time, I do think there's a huge lack in the book department for this for children. And I do, of course, a little tangent, but one of my clients uh, just bought three of her books the other day because I'm now oh, selling cool. New York. If anybody needs them, come to, and you need a U.S. no, you know, shipping, come to me. Um, and she was sort of like, I don't know which ones to get. And I just, whatever. I said, really intuitively pick it. It doesn't matter. They're all amazing. She came home and said her daughter is in love with the book, like couldn't get enough of the book. And of course I didn't grab them to have them right next to me right now, but yep. I, I can't even remember which one, but I think it's the imagination. Which one was that? Uh, Magna Somir. The, the or the product. creation year creation year I think it's creation year but yeah. it, you know and to have and she was like I couldn't believe nope the red one which one's the red one oh oh hazel mist yes, <laughs> yes. okay that one yes this one those are all imagination you know that <laughs> yeah. the child she couldn't believe how much she lit up reading the book and I think oh wow like six or seven and she said it's her absolute like she could not put it down she just wanted to keep reading it reading it reading it and reading it so I, you know, to your point, children are naturally ignited by this potential, right? Mm -hmm. And there is this growing idea that, that we're in conflict with, because I think, like I said, my generation, it was, I, I want to be seen as an intelligent woman. And, and yet that's a little bit in conflict with exploring your imagination, exploring your intuition, exploring these sort of nonlinear aspects of self. And for me, when I started to expand out of medicine, you know, I had a hard time putting value in body talk and value mm -hmm. in exploring these imaginative aspects. And what a gift to the world that you are giving children the opportunity to uh, see, feel, and ignite value in that creative process early on, right? If that right. one book, if she, she just keeps being able to go back to it. And even if the world is saying no, you need to study that math concept more and she can go read that book and like, just remember that, okay, Maisel says that. Okay. Right. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, that, that means so, so, so much to our own support. And I, I say that like when I started to meet body talk practitioners that even valued emotions, right? Like, oh, you're crying. That's amazing. And I was like, you know, like that, 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 that's okay with all of you. If I just cry right now, even though we're in the classroom and right. this idea that there's a, there's a wisdom, there's a knowing inside. Oh, what a gift to the world. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. One thing that's really cool actually is um, I live in Saskatchewan, Canada, and in the grade three health curriculum, they are now teaching about the inner self. Really? Yeah. Only in about the last, actually, 
my book came out my my first book your inner compass that could hold and because it, 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 it teaches all about that and I, I believe the next either that fall right before it came out or the next one was the first time that they implemented the inner self unit so it's only been a couple of years that they've been doing that so it's been really cool because I've actually got to go speak about the inner self to one of the schools where I live and I've been doing that every year until until this year um but it's been neat Hi. because then I get to share the book and then we even do like a meet your inner self meditation with the group and it's so cool because they just get in there no problem and they've got all kinds of stories about what their inner self was like and I'll ask them questions and they're just so engaged right but then it's like you can do this anytime like if you have questions or if you run into a problem like you can yeah. use your you yeah. can access your inner self like that if you want which is kind of a fun way for kids yeah mm -hmm. I I I I think in this time, it's so important, right? This idea that if we're finding our worth and value and stuff that's going on out there, given the current climate of the world, which is just so unstable in so many capacities, right. yes, that it can feel really unnerving. And I wanted to, I was just looking at a statistic, statistic that came across my feed and um, it, believe it or not, it was a statistic from Canada, but it says, the kids help phone received 4.2 million calls and messages in 2020 compared to 1.8 million the year before. So that was Ottawa has seen Canada's second highest increase in distress calls to the at kids help phone. You know, like wild. The, you know, we were feeling it. And I think, you know, which is I've had discussions with our own high school psychiatrists and psychologists and social workers. Okay. And they are feeling it too. You know? and, and I don't know who couldn't be feeling this right, right. now. And if yeah. you have pathways of exploring your own inner landscape as a source of comfort, wow, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then even just like another thing I try to do with my kids and, and even just with the books is to be feel safe to express yourselves. And so I'm hoping to kind of go in that direction with some of my next books that are coming up just about like emotions and why we need them and what they're good for. And even just communicating some of those things, because when kids feel safe to share those things, it's just so helpful. Yeah. Right. Release some of those burdens yeah. that they're carrying around. And so that kind of, well, maybe that's a segue into this book, The Sweet Dreams Express. Although it's a bedtime book, one of the things we do in there is like unpack your baggage from the day. And so there's actually some techniques where it's like, okay, find where you're holding something in your body from your day. You can connect with it. You know, does it have a color? Does it have a sensation? What does it feel like? What emotion is it? And then you can grab it and pull it out. Maybe they might need to have a conversation about it you know, with their parent or caregiver and just to help resolve and, and release and unpack some of the things they might be carrying inside their bodies from just the events of the day or the events of the week, which will actually help them unwind their mind and their bodies for sleep. Why? What kind of stuff do we store in our body? All kinds of things, <laughs> all kinds of things. Like, um, so say something happens and you have some emotions that come up, except you don't feel safe to express those emotions because you're in the middle of your classroom or there was a time before when you did express your emotions and then someone made fun of you. So now you don't want to do that. So then you store them inside yourself and you carry those around. And hopefully there's someone who can help you unwind those or hopefully you have techniques to unwind them on your own. But kids how are they supposed to know how to do that without someone leading the way or at least showing them or talking about it right how do you so know it's stored in the body pardon me how do you know it's stored in the body like that well i think it's, for the world that might be a bit of a foreign concept right like so I'm curious how you link kids into understanding that or even parents into understanding the idea that you can store your burdens in your body well, yeah, emotions are energy, right? And energy needs to move. Like emotions are actually supposed to move. We're supposed to feel them. They're supposed to flow through us and then ah, release. 
Um, but if we don't, and we're holding it all in, that emotional energy has to go somewhere. So our body has different places where it tends to store certain emotions. Um, so sometimes in certain muscles or in certain organs and that sort of thing. And then when our body is storing that emotional energy, it can actually impede the function of that area. So it's like, oh, I've got a whole bunch of knots in my shoulders. Your what, shoulders. Are you reading me? <laughs> <laughs> Your shoulders, Anybody for example. That has that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Maybe we could uh, end a little like you could do a little <laughs> meditation for us to release some stuff. Anyway, go oh, ahead. Yeah. 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 So your shoulders tend to hold your responsibilities. And if your responsibilities start to feel heavy or you're carrying a lot of them, then they can get stored as burdens in your shoulders. So that's just Wait one example. Wait a minute. There's all how kinds. Could, how could responsibilities ever, ever be anything but a burden? <laughs> well, there's all kinds of people who actually, okay, I'll give you the example of my business. Yeah. Most of the time I love what I do. It's still a responsibility though right? Or parenting. Like, I love my kids. It's usually doesn't weigh on me too much. But then there's times where it's actually probably linked to all, linked back to our thinking always. But for example, last night, we had a huge windstorm. And so my kids were both up in the night. So then I could be like, oh, you know, in my mind, and then actually create the burdens of parenting today on my shoulders. Right? Because like, as, as a windstorm, example. right, you have your concerns. And then you have the perceived idea that you have to take care of your kids, right? So you've right. got like all these sort of needs. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really interesting. So then actually an example of um, my daughter was up last night. So using some of the, like, I'm like, sweetheart, you have a really powerful mind. I'm like, let's just try something new. I know it's really windy out. I know you can hear it in your room, but let's pretend we're putting headphones on. And they just cancel out all of the noise. As soon as you put them on, like they can be super squishy and comfortable. You can make them whatever you want, but they make it so you can't hear the wind um, or they can make it so you can't hear anything. And she's like, oh, well, I kind of want to be able to hear this. I'm like, okay, then maybe it just has a dial on the side. You can adjust. So, and, and she's like, okay, I'll try. And she went back up to bed because yeah, and, and gave it a try and she woke up in the morning and she's like, I had to try a couple different things and I had to like turn on one side to the other. And I think I was at like three times and then I fell asleep until morning. But like, I was like, I don't know what idea to use, but let's just try this. And, and I'm yeah. like, you can create these things in your mind. That's like the first thing is your mind's really powerful. And the second thing is you have to believe in yourself. And that's like and that you just described self-healing. <laughs> you know, in the most powerful way. But I think what I would really like to pull out of that is we always don't know what we're doing before we do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. You know, that you're always sort of faced with this. I don't know how to do it. I mean, I, you know, like people will say to me, oh, you've done so much. You, 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 you must, you know, always know what to do. And it's like, no, I am I am riddled with the, I don't know what to do, <laughs> probably even more than the next person because whatever my tool basket is too big and I have ADDs, I don't know which one, you know, not that I've ever been diagnosed with that, but I mean, you know what I mean? And you yeah. kind of don't know which one to choose mm -hmm. but to have a set of steps that helps you. Right. For sure. Well, and then also intuitively, what do I need in this moment? Yeah. Right. Like yeah, that always helps with decision making. Is, not working today. <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah it, yeah it can definitely happen that way right <laughs> uh, yeah because I didn't sleep last night I wish I could have called you and you could have yeah. told me about this little dial that <laughs> I could have used we've well, literally never done that before dial that was the first time so Put your honey iced tea down got me <laughs> you love that one to get honey iced tea yeah. uh, but like that's that's imagination yeah too right and that's the that's why imagination is also important it's not it can be for anything it can be for healing it can be for a project that you have to do it can be you know yeah what are you inspired to create today well let's play with our imagination and i find so much inspiration for me comes from that if i'm trying to think things up with my left brain that are inspiring it doesn't typically work as good <laughs> right right and and it's as much a 
it's not like the left brain is bad, right? No. It works a heck of a lot better when it's matched with Right. Merging those two together and not Styles just being one or the other. Down and colorful flowers that might have messages for you and mm -hmm. uh, any other sort of form of insight. But crazy to think that you can get that insight from yourself. And I think maybe you, you're, you're describing that it's even inspiring to watch how quickly and easily children will find their own insight in like two seconds. And then you, you as an adult watch it and you're like, oh my goodness, like all of my beliefs make that like a literally painful process where you're like, oh, <laughs> is this a blue flower? What does a blue flower I mean? A blue, well, that's associated with a water element. And if it's a water element, it's probably fear. You know, you're not even like, you're popping in and out between the two. At least this is my, you know, sometimes battle. It's like, I know I've almost, you know, I always joke with people as a nurse, like every symptom that arises from tension in the shoulders, I have at least a list of a hundred ways that you can die from that, that I know of either personally from clients <laughs> I've worked with, or I've studied for tests that, you know, were, you know, yep. that's like developing a relationship with uh, alternative ways of engaging with sensations. Mm -hmm is is such a powerful way and so here's the thing Absolutely. what does that change that a loaded question right what does that change if you if you use your creative mind i think it makes things a lot more fun first of all <laughs> right. yeah yeah yeah, just way more fun. I think like the things that, I don't know, even in just in business, which I know this is actually about the kids stuff, but the people, like if I'm looking at other entrepreneurs who are like doing amazing things, they're always using their imagination, yeah. right? Like they're always getting creative. Like I don't, I don't really see those things as separate anymore. Like the people who excel in life are using both. Oh. Right? They're using their imagination. They're using their creativity. They're thinking outside the box. They're doing things in a way that most people don't think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. you have to have that right brain, creativity, yeah. imagination, and then you have to have the knowledge structures to actually take action and put those things, those wheels into motion. Like the value of not doing it the way everyone else did it, but doing it a new way. I mean, mm -hmm. wow. Like that, like, and I went through, you know, a good stage of co college or even the beginning of my medicine career thinking that I always needed to know how other people did it, which is hilarious because I probably worked night shift because there was less noise and I could, you know, really sort of sense and feel my patients oh, yeah. and be more in a flow, you know, rather than the running to tests and administrators and all of the red tape around that was like, who am I not pleasing now? Right. Like, right. Oh, okay, all 20 of you. Awesome. You know, mm -hmm. where at night it was like this much more intuitive flow, much more about helping people to get to sleep or whatever that might be. So it's, uh, it's interesting how we sneak that in as an adult, like who would have known maybe that's night shift workers are actually, you know, <laughs> people who are seeking to use your creative mind more because they have more space, you know? Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that means anything opposite of what they yeah. say workers, but it's like, I was looking for ways to explore it when it was housed in this idea that it wasn't valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I imagine that would be tricky, especially in the, in the medical realm. Yeah, you know, right? and, just and how this... you're taught to function and, and think. I know there, I mean, there's intuitive people in every profession, though. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I always say that, like, I, I was lucky when I, when I was doing my nurse practitioner training. Well, no, even the, the first year I was out doing it, that I had the gift of working with doctors who were trained in a much more intuitive way. They didn't have all the testing, right? They didn't have CAT scans and MRIs and relentless lab tests. And they could put the hand on the belly. I mean, Dr. Kenneth Ford, I remember him. Oh my God, this beautiful black man. He would put his hand on people's belly and literally he would ask one question. 
they give the answer and he knew what needed to happen. And then all the residents did the legal stuff, right? Did all the tests that they had to do to make sure it was okay, but he knew. And I just still this day remember like, whoa, like nobody taught me that. Like, what, what did you feel with your hand? You know, he, he would hardly even right. push around. Like he would just, and then I had the gift of working with another new, you know, new surgeon who was much younger, probably 20 years younger. And it was a battery of tests, you know, a battery of questions, a battery of tests, everything was much more in the other realm. And I was sort of like, that was what I was more familiar with. That was what my training was about, like a page, okay. you know, 17 pages of questions. And then here, this man didn't do that at all. And I was like, can I just live with you? You know, like, I just want to like suck as much of this as I possibly can, because it was so mind blowing. And here you are providing a platform for children to do that, which is, um... so tell me about, I bet, who's your favorite character of all your books? Oh, that's a tough one. Um... But we could also say, intuitively, which character do you feel drawn to talk about today? Or maybe we'll, maybe we'll take a break and then we'll, we'll, we'll give okay. you a chance to think about it and sure. we'll sort of explore a character and okay. um, what, you know, the creative process of developing her. Uh, Cause I posted on my, on my Instagram, I thought that was so cool. One of your illustrators like, oh, had yeah. that, that process of her drawing out yeah. and what a yeah, oh, of hazel yeah, hazel mist it was mm -hmm. such a cool i'll have to do it again but maybe what a neat like you just feel right like and i love that these characters are kind of stick figures you know they're they're mm -hmm. not um because you know, so many of us think we have to have this incredible detail to evoke it and the idea and the wisdom behind the idea you connect into immediately yeah it's pretty cool to watch illustrators uh, work and do their magic especially because it is all on um, like devices these days that you can, they can even just do like a playback where it shows you exactly what they were doing the whole time. It's really cool. Like a time loop of how they were creating illustration. Drawing it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's and what a neat process, right? And she read your story and then developed the illustrations from the story, right? Uh, well, actually I do the art direction so I have to give like a, I think I probably sent her like a 12 page document that oh, describes really? every illustration. And then the character, we start with the character design and then we get into like, they do sketches and I have to give feedback for yeah. every round and then color and that stuff as well. So it's less about reading the story for the illustrator's perspective and more of like the planning of what, what's on this page, what's on that page. Like it is a yeah, it is quite the process. Yeah, much more detailed than my little mind even wanted to imagine. Wow, you know, <laughs> like and that there, suddenly I can feel the burden. <laughs> right? Wow, it's amazing what you ooh, 12 page document to come up with the illustrations. Ah, oh yeah, and that's that? just the beginning. Right. <laughs> and yeah, so it's pretty that's fun what, though. It yeah. is pretty fun. And then you get to watch the whole thing come to life. So yeah. Yeah, it's neat. And I've gotten to actually, I've been speaking to schools, I've been teaching them the picture book process. So like the writing process and how to really get that creative mind open for the kids before and then writing about something that they're passionate about, because it's like, you're going to have to read it after. And, and then even just how to come up with some illustration ideas and how to lay some of those things out or how to like plan your own covers and stuff like that. So that's been pretty cool because I think I've spoken to almost 2,500 students around our province in the last couple of years. So yeah, it's been a really neat experience and not something I would have ever imagined myself doing, <laughs> like right. not being right, creative like, until I was 30. <laughs> right. Well, we could dissect that if we wanted yeah. to. I mean, yeah, there's no probably way not you fully true, athlete but... that you were without using your creative mind. Like I, I, I feel like sometimes athletes are the ones that are sort of the easiest to, to sell this type of work to because they, they get that you literally, you just can't, you can't be a good athlete unless you've accessed the zone and the zone is not, yeah. right? It's not all, you gotta let go of your intelligence or your outcome or what you think and then. Right, I never, I still don't think I ever saw the zone as creative from a sports perspective though. 
I don't know if that's just how left-brained I was. Yeah. Yeah. When you were in it that you didn't yeah. even know that that's what you were doing. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, I think I knew when I was in the zone, I just never thought that like, I would have never labeled it as a creative right. zone. Right. Like that moment, like I was in my like athletic yeah. zone yeah. where I can almost do anything, but I wouldn't have labeled that as creative. Right. Right. And when did, mm-hmm. when would you say that you started to open to that being something creative? Um, well, Mindscape start with my, using Mindscape. I started kind of dissecting some of my beliefs about creativity because like even I struggled in art class cause I was like too particular and I was trying to do it in a left brain way and just, it never worked. And so I was just like, what's the point of creativity? And so yeah, as I started athlete. like breaking, I'm not, a, I'm not an artist, I'm an athlete. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And so as I started like questioning some of the things that I thought about creativity, it started opening things up more. And then one day I had the idea of like, I, I was writing a rhyme book for my son and I was like, huh, I wonder if I could make that into like an inspirational kids book. Cause they had some cool like rhyming lines at the end. And I said it out loud to my husband, but I don't know if I even registered it. Cause I, I think it was about five months later that I sat down and actually tried to write something, but then I got in the zone and I wrote it in like an hour and a half. And that was my first book. Oh. So then from there, it's like, okay, now what am I going to do with this? So I've had a whole bunch of like left brain blocks the whole way. Cause yeah. that's normally how I function or like, okay, now what? but then have to get creative with every part of it and really pushing outside my comfort zone. But it's been cool to see what can come to life when you're doing that. And that's not just me. That's anyone, right? Like, right. No, I mean, I feel like I'm going in and out of the process with you right now. All right. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. We're going to take our break and we're going to come back and talk about one of the characters in a little bit more detail and continue this, this sort of dive into the creative process as a solution, not just for, this is the other thing we haven't talked about, but I want to get into is like knowing yourself, right? Like this is really a pathway to knowing yourself and, and how important that is. So absolutely. Uh, yes. If you have any questions, comments, anything you want to share with us, feel free to call in 1-800-930-2819. And otherwise we'll be right back. love that soothing music. You're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. I am the host every third Wednesday of the month for Colette's show. And I am so honored to be here today with author and you name it, every title you could imagine after that. But children's book author is the focus for today, uh, Kristen Pierce. And um, Kristen, can you share your contact information for the audience if anybody wants to get in contact with you? Absolutely. Not only like you work with clients one-on-one, you teach classes on how to help people find their creative minds. Do you teach that for children too? Not yet. I'm looking into it. (laughs) Um, Yeah. My my website um, for the books is called innercompassbooks.com. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram at Inner Compass Books. And then my therapeutic side is called Inner Compass Academy. So innercompassacademy.com and then same thing, or you can email uh, me at info at innercompassbooks.com. Great. So you can work with her one-on-one. You can take one of her classes. You can buy her books. If you want to buy them from the United States, go to karenbetten.com, K-A-R-E-N-B-E-T-T-E-N.com and We've got them on our website because I just think they're such an incredible gift to the world. You can go to Kristen's websites if you're in Canada um, or wherever, you know. Um, It's, as we've been discussing on and on and on, the incredible potential that lies in this creative mind. So when we left off, we were talking about just kind of exploring one of the characters and, um, you know, your inspiration behind it, your intent what children can get out of it. Uh, and so which one did you pick? I'm dying to know and I can't oh, wait to look up. It's a tie. I'm not <laughs> sure. These two are my favorite. <laughs> so <laughs> red or green? Magnus Omir, Mind Pioneer. And then I have Hazel Mist, Hypnotist. So yeah, so Magnus, yeah, he came out last year and then Hazel Mist is my newest one. Mm. They're both about the power of the mind um, in different ways though. This one, Hazel Mist is very much about belief systems and how they block us. 
where Magnus O'Meara, mind pioneer, he's about inventing and how he's always like in his imagination creating things and doesn't always fit into the classroom and what he's supposed to be doing in class but how there's many, many inventive minds and not just inventive, just I call them marvelous minds of history that have created some pretty amazing things using their intuition or their intuitive mind in a structured way. So yeah, these are my two faves. All right, I wanna talk about the mind pioneer because okay. I just, I really feel that resonance to like feeling like you don't belong, you know? I right. Mean, to get personal like that, I would say that is the thing that has, in some way driven me my whole life. So, okay. wow, could you, could we go back in time and you write that book for me <laughs> when I'm five? Totally, hey, yeah, yeah no, I think this, least. it resonates with a lot of kids um, and, and even parents. I find that that happens a lot as well. Um, but yeah, Magnus, he gets, he gets lost in his imagination. He loves to tinker and create. And so I'll just show you a couple of the pages here. He's He's in his little tree house and he's making all kinds of things. And then when he gets to class, like he's dreaming and he's got all kinds of invention ideas. And then when he gets to class, he makes this thing. It's, it's a motorized tickler. Um, and tickler. his teacher's, yeah. And his teacher's not super happy about it because he is um, kind of interrupting the class, but he was doing it to try to make one of his friends feel better. And so anyways, then he's trying to focus and his teacher hand, hands out a historic hero project. So she, um, she wants them to investigate somebody that they're inspired by, a historic hero. And so he's trying to stay focused, but off he goes into his imagination. And that's where he gets in trouble because he's inventing some things and he's got an idea and then he's like, Eureka. <laughs> and so then he gets, um, he gets in trouble. And so he's feeling a bit deflated and he's starting to question the things he's created, which I feel like that happens to us. You know, we hit some of these problems or we run into roadblocks and then we start to question ourselves and our passions and some of the things that, you know, that's, you know, we're following our inner compass, but we'll have some bumps in the road. And then we start to question that. Okay, but this is not a children's book. This is a human book. All humans <laughs> need to read this. So then he goes to help the li uh, librarian in the library and as he's putting some books back up on the shelf one falls off and then a few of them do and hit him in the head kind of a little wake up call and they end up being books about inventors so he starts reading all about them and he's getting lost in all of these books <laughs> the sun goes down and then he runs home and he has this big like light bulb moment of like this is what I have been doing like, I'm just like these people. So he's reading about, um, he's reading about Einstein and Tesla and Edison even, and, is, and Da Vinci and all of these like marvelous minds. And so, yeah, then he's like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been doing. So he heads back and he starts making a list of all of these marvelous minds that he's been reading about to, to see who he wants to share his presentation on. And then he also makes a list of mind hacks so yeah so I call them mind hacks but they're just different things you can use to get into that creative state of mind so it's like kids can actually right. check that list out and try some of them for themselves all right can we read out a couple of them yeah sure um so and some of them come from like playing pool that's what Mozart did to get in his zone and like the like cue ball like that yeah he would play pool and so that would keep his left brain busy with what he was doing and he'd create symphonies in his mind. Oh, yep. Um, that. That's so cool. Yeah. Taking a shower or a bath, um, hanging upside down. So um, I, I do that when I go to aerial yoga, especially if I'm getting stuck in my mind. I'm like, okay, it's time to hang upside down. And that can actually be so great on so many levels for your creativity. Drain out. <laughs> when you go upside down naturally right That's oh you should well it gives you it, there's so many things it gives you a different perspective it gives you a cerebrospinal flush it takes you know new oxygen new nutrients to your brain but it's it's amazing and you get so the help of gravity of getting yep. some new stuff up in the brain i love oh, that really you use gravity to your advantage upside it's, down absolutely yep um mind journeys that's what einstein did um, listening to music, daydreaming, uh, going for a walk, 
power mm. naps. Um, there were a couple people who they actually didn't sleep fully through the night. I can't remember which inventor it was, but he used to just sleep for like 20 to 40 minutes at a time. Intermittent, intermittent napping. I feel like that was, I feel like Einstein was the one that didn't sleep very much. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm not so sure cool if that was Da Vinci or who that was. Yeah. So then here, right. And nowadays it would be like, well, you must be sick because you need to get eight hours of sleep. And if you don't get it right, like, so this is the idea of getting to know yourself in this process of what works for you. Right. And learning to listen to your body, right? Beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then he does this big presentation. He ended up picking way more than one person. Um, but he's talking about how, how they used intuition to come up with their ideas. And most of like Mozart obviously was not an inventor, but he still used his intuitive mind that way. And so, yeah, it's, he shares, and all of this is true information. And then he goes on and teaches his class, a meditation for how, how to get into their own minds. And the teacher here tells him that she's really impressed and that she's learned a lot from him, which I think is important for kids to know, right? Like I try to tell my kids that on a regular basis, like I, I'm still learning too. I don't know everything or like, thank you for teaching me that, you know, I feel like that's just as important for kids to know, like we're learning too. We still don't know, like we don't know everything. And, um, and then at the end, it shows all the kids in the class using their intuition or their intuitive minds to do all kinds of different things. It's not just for inventing, they're creating, like building, mastering some skills, creating something new, doing art. Ooh, so amazing. Yeah. So we don't have, okay, go ahead, keep going. We this is oh, just the go. last That's, thing. That that was what my client uh, was like, oh, really? And she bought that book because that's the <laughs> list of all of, you know, the inventors that use their creative mind. What a brilliant, brilliant idea. What a gift. It's really world. cool. Oh, yeah. And not just inventors, like mathematicians. Right. Yeah. Like there's a couple mathematicians. There's some scientists. There's like JK Rowling. Like if you think right. about what she did, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like creating a whole parallel universe. <laughs> Yeah, and then an empire kids, based on my that. My kids have been know? watching those movies every night. That's like the, how the teenagers are bonding. The 18-year-old and the 20-year-old are watching those movies together. Oh, that's cool. Each night, one of the movies, which is, you know, it's fun, you know, that yeah. they, whatever that they get. Yeah. My, my son was like, is, are you going to watch this? And I was like, I, I don't, the, I don't really like those dark movies. Not that they're dark. I just don't like them. And I was like, no, I'm getting, he's like, can I have your seat in the couch? I mean, it's too funny. It's like, get out of here because I want to go in and that's too funny yeah so the 20 marvelous minds are pretty neat and just give a different perspective on how the mind can be used in so many ways not just for inventing but it shows the power of imagination which is pretty awesome oh beautiful all right yeah. so we decided that we were going to end with you doing a little reading from your amazing book because i honestly think um as i said that last time that uh a 20, 20 year old was in here going, she read the inner compass book and was like, I could use to read that to myself every day. Right. Like, I mean, I think as the, the academic uh, challenges get more, you know, mm -hmm. we, we can inadvertently become disconnected and it's just a slight right. that we need to just pull us back in. So, right. Or yeah. even just that it can help us be more aligned in our decisions like so many times yeah. we're making decisions for what we think other people want us to do and it's like you got to come back and do what's important for you right okay so yeah I was just going to read a little bit of the sweet dreams yeah. express um and especially did you want me to go into this part where they whatever part you feel okay about, read. yeah I'm good. okay just get in my little listening okay so now close your eyes and move inside Breathe in real deep. It's time to find just where your mind feels stuck and bound with thoughts and feelings tightly wound. Scan your body from head to toe. Find heavy spots that block your flow. Breathe through each blockage with your air. With gentle hands, show it you care. Then watch it shift and feel it swirl, blow it all out, let it untwirl. Each heavy spot that tries to stay, grab it, 
pull it and toss it away. Repeat until the stuck is gone. Release it with a great big yawn. So yeah, we could keep going, but those are honestly, yeah, those are the two beautiful. pages that I, I do with my kids on a regular basis and not just before bed, yeah. right? Like if you have a symptom showing up, it's like, okay, let's look into it. What are you holding in there? How yeah. does it feel? What's stuck? What are you thinking about? What does it remind you of? Or what happened that you're holding in there? And you would be surprised what your kids will tell you that they haven't told you about their day yet. Yeah. Right. Somebody yeah. pushed me off the swing and wouldn't let me have a turn after. And now I have a big knot in my back because I feel like I got backstabbed. Mm -hmm. Kids are just being kids. Right. But they're taking it so personally and then they hold it in their bodies and causes problems. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing, even just as a way to connect with your kids. Absolutely. Goodness. Yeah. Thank you so much for this amazing gift and our last minute together i just want to uh thank you for taking the time to be on the show and to explore uh your process your work and uh the incredible opportunity that lies in our creative minds all you know and here's the thing the mind's always with you right <laughs> you can't leave it can't leave it at home absolutely you can do it on a mountain you can do it when you're walking you can do it when you've been stung by a bee or you've had a challenge or a fight or whatever it is it's an endless opportunity and absolutely that you've created for children give them the opportunity right to sort of find that power within themselves and right. sort of live off with it so yeah thank you so much thank you to the community thank you to olivia our amazing producer who's been guiding us all along i, I can feel her sort of she's got this cool energy so uh <laughs> she's new here and uh thank you so much um real quick thank you website. thank you for having me <laughs> thank you for sharing your wisdom too awesome. <laughs> awesome to connect with you and your website one last time innercompassbooks.com fabulous all right so please reach out to her i'm karen betten.com k-a-r-e-n-b-e-t-t-e-n -E -E like bet ten dollars and um, next week colette will be back uh, on wednesday at 8 a.m pacific 11 a.m eastern standard time and uh, I'm sure Kristen and I will be exploring again in the future. So thank you all. Have a wonderful day. And I look forward to our next connections.